Let's pray for some of our families who are away with the kids. They are having adventurers camp today. So a good number of kids, they are away for that. And a few of our kids, they are here. Just letting you know that's the change we have today. Before we look into God's word, let's pray. Father, we just want to say thank you for this opportunity that we can hear your word. But before we launch into your word, we want to invite you. You've been here. We have worshipped you through songs, through prayer, through giving. And now we continue on being in your presence. And we pray for our children. We pray for the families who are away for this adventurer's camp. And for us who are here as we worship you, we pray that may you bless us through your word and open our eyes and ears and heart and mind so that we can receive you. Change us from inside out. Only through your Holy Spirit we can be changed. Only through your word we can be transformed. It's your moment, Lord, for we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. This week, as I was spending some time with my boy, who is five year old, he, he's full of energy and he loves to climb. He's climbing on anything and everything in the house. And uh, apparently, there are times when he climbs on my shoulders as well. And he loves to balance. <laughs> so as I was sitting, he climbed up onto my shoulders, and he wanted to stand on my shoulders. He fell a few times, by the way. And then I said, while I was sitting there, I said, I better have my hoodie on, and I want to have this in the chair so, you know, I look like a really good person. <laughs> so then I thought, I'll take advantage of the moment. And uh, yeah, I managed to have him on my shoulders. That moment actually reminded me of my time when I was young. I remember my father, we were going somewhere. I can't remember where we were going. But on the way, there was one river. And uh, apparently, the bridge was broken. He got me onto his shoulders. I will never forget that. It's somewhere locked in my memory. And he crossed that river while I was on his shoulders. But then in 2014, he felt really badly sick. Those shoulders that had so much energy and vigor to carry a heavy person like me were weak. Couldn't carry any more heavy weight. And he passed away in 2014. And while I was uh, enjoying that moment, I was saying to myself, thank you, Lord, that at the moment I can have him on my shoulders. Thank you for the strength that you have given me. But I'm mindful, Lord, that the time is going to come when these shoulders, they will grow weak. And I might not be able to carry him on my shoulders anymore. That's the reality of life. As I was, uh, by the way, today's uh, message is titled, Celebrating God's Precious Gift of Life. And as I was browsing through internet, I wanted to see what is it that people are doing to avoid aging. There are a number of things people are doing, and there were about 30 ideas, and I managed to just grab a few of them. Google tells us that we, if, if we want to avoid aging, we need to protect our skin from the sun. So maybe next time when you're walking in the sun, carry your umbrellas with you. <laughs> if you want to remain young. Use anti-aging skincare products, or avoid smoking and alcohol to prevent aging. 
ask your dermatologist about Botox. <laughs> Consider Morpheus 8, I have no idea what that is, for skin resurfacing. Get plenty of sleep to fight wrinkles. That is good. Use a serum with retinol or follow a healthy diet for glowing skin. That's nice. Uh, I was thinking, man, I need to change many things here. I want to avoid aging. And then another thing that I explore, I said, man, there is so much on Google about how people are trying to avoid aging. Google also told me that uh, there are, <coughs> there are anti-aging products. And there is a report that was shared, uh, I think it was in 2021, in America. Uh, this is, I wanted to share with you. The global anti-aging products market size was valued in 2021 at about 40 billion in 2020 and is expected to expand at a compound annual growth rate of 5.4 from 2021 to 2028. That's huge. Big growth. Rising awareness among consumers related to age-related skin problems such as fine lines, wrinkles, and dullness of skin coupled with an increasing propensity to spend on products that help them to proclaim their skin youthfulness is expected to drive the market demand throughout the forecast period till 2028. There are many people out there, or even here, who are trying to fight that, trying to fight aging. One of the surveys that was conducted here in New Zealand this is what it tells us, that uh, over about 21,700 people, or 0.7 percent, who felt lonely all the time. Some of the elderly I'm talking about, uh, statistics, they tell us that about 94,500 people, most of the time, they felt lonely. And about 374,000, 12 percent, some of the time, and 18 percent of young adults fat lonely all, most or some of the time, compared with 11% of older people. Over the period of my ministry, I have talked with who knows how many elderly people or you know, church members, and many times when you're talking, you would hear that they are lonely. They are feeling lonely, they are feeling down, they are feeling depressed. And as, as, as people grow in age, as we mature, this feeling increases. Statistically, in New Zealand, that's proven. I'm just a bit doubtful of these stats where, where it says 11% of people are feeling lonely. It's way more than that. Way more than that. But today, I'm not here to share with you some products that will that will help us to fight aging, which I wish I could, or share with you some secret formulas that can help us avoid aging, avoid growing old. But I do want to look at what's the biblical perspective on that. Today, by the way, our plan was to celebrate the life of some of, uh, some of our old people or some senior people in this church just to appreciate their presence and acknowledge their contributions in the church. And few of them, they are housebound, they can't be here. So I've been in touch with them through the week as well. So coming back to the Bible, so what is biblical perspective on aging? How as a Christian, how as God's child, I must respond to that? One thing is very clear that none of us, we can stop aging. From the moment I am born, I'm destined to age. Some people can make it till the last minute. Some people along the way, they fall asleep or they fall sick. But So what, what's the biblical pers uh, perspective on this topic? 
I thought I'll share this graph with you. I don't know if you can see that, but hopefully you are able to see this line. Starting from Adam till Eli, this graph is showing the age. When we start with Adam, you see the graph starts right here above 900 years. And as you move here, I think that's Jared or Methuselah. That's Jared and that's Methuselah. Their, their age was the highest age as you look from some of the Bible characters in the Old Testament. And as you begin to come down, you have here this line, Noah. That's when the big flood happens. That's when you see the wickedness increases. And during Noah's time, there was a big flood. And after the flood, what has happened? This graph has started going down and down and down and down and down. Right here. I'll sh share with you a few numbers here in this graph. Adam lived about 930 years, right? And then you have here Jared, he was about 962 years. He lived longer than Adam. And then Methuselah is the highest, 969 years he lived. But as you come to Noah, who is 950, and that was the only person where you saw a couple of hundreds. After that, you have Shem, 600, and then can you notice what's happening? From 400 to 200, 200 to 100, then you have 200, then you have 175. How age dropped over time. I hope you have noticed how age decreased after the flood. Before the flood, people lived for a couple of hundreds of years, but after the flood, people's lifespan decreased. There's one thing which we cannot ignore, and definitely that's the impact of sin. Over time, as you see, it started here, and over time, till flood, you have people still living in their 900s. And after Noah, the age is decreased. And it's still happening. It's a painful journey. Some people, they, they take that. But in the Bible, also, you have people who had a painful journey as well. You remember the time when Joseph, he was sold into slavery by his brothers. He went into Egypt. And how God led him, he became prime minister or he gained the highest position in Egypt. And while he was there, his brothers, they come to Egypt. And then he also brings his father to Egypt. And while his father was summoned by Pharaoh, this is what happens. The dialogue is taking between Jacob and Pharaoh. And observe some of the words that are shared here. Then Joseph brought in his father in Egypt. He is, this, this text is talking about. Then Joseph brought in his father Jacob and set him before Pharaoh. And Jacob blessed Pharaoh. And Pharaoh said to Jacob, how old are you? This is a conversation taking place between Jacob and Pharaoh. And Jacob said to Pharaoh, the days of the years of my pilgrimage are 130 years. Few and evil have been the days of the years of my life, and they have not attained to the days of the years of the life of my fathers in the days of their pilgrimage. So Jacob blessed Pharaoh and went out from before Pharaoh. We can, from these words, we can sense the life of Jacob, the journey that he was taking. He, as he's talking with Pharaoh, he said, I'm about 130 years old, but the journey hasn't been easy for me. I mean, he's telling the truth. Remember, he had to run for his life to Haran, and then from there he's now brought to Egypt. And while he was there, his sons, they gave him a really hard time because they, saw, uh, they told their father that uh, his son, whom he really loved so much, who, who was Joseph, is dead. They lied to him, and that was 
such a big blow for him as, as a father. So pilgrimage is a figurative uh, representation of the inconsistency and weariness of the earthly life, in which man does not attain to that true rest for which he was created and for which his soul continually longs. That's the truth of this life. So Jacob's evaluation of his life was true when compared with that of his father's. I mean, Abraham, as you can notice from this graph, Abraham lived for 175 years. And Isaac, he lived about 180 years. But Jacob, who is son of Isaac, he's almost now 130, and he was quite old at that time. He's, he's soon after that, he died. Bible also shows us that aging, as we age, as we grow, Bible expects, God's word expects that wisdom must grow. Bible has in Proverbs chapter 16, verse 7, uh, 31, this is what it says, the silver-haired head is a crown of glory. Yeah, Colin is happy now. If it is found in the way of righteousness. You have many other people who are out there, they are old as well. But Bible makes it clear that the silver-haired head is a crown of glory, and then it gives a little bit more information if it is found in the way of righteousness. The book of uh, Proverbs was written by King Solomon. I just wanted to share with you quickly about Solomon. He lived somewhere between 989 to 931 B.C., and that makes about 58 to 60 years. And that's the age he died, about 60 years of age, 58 to 60 years. Quite young, isn't it? He started very well with God. God blessed him with wisdom. He was the one, during his time, it was golden era for Israelites. His kingdom was exemplary for the nations. And as you look through Proverbs and Ecclesiastes and Song of Solomon, all these books, they are written by King Solomon. So in the beginning, you have Proverbs. Proverbs, it seems like that he wrote while he was quite young. He was very in tune with God. And then also Song of Solomon, you, you see that when he's really in full vigor and he's experiencing the power of emotions and the power of love. But as you come to another book, which is the book of Ecclesiastes, you discover a different side. It seems you, you look at a person who is quite matured, quite grown in age, and is meditating upon life. As he's looking back and he's meditating upon life, he figures out that there are not many things that are more important in life than God himself. This tells me that growing mature, growing old, does not guarantee that I remain faithful to God. I want to share one quote with you from uh, Prophets and Kings. This is what the Voice of Prophecy writes. From being, from being one of the greatest kings that ever wielded a scepter, Solomon became profligate, the tool and slave of others. His character, once noble and manly, became enervated and effy effeminate. His faith in the living God was supplanted by atheistic doubts. Unbelief murdered his happiness, weakness his principles, and degraded his life. The justice and magnanimity of his early reign were changed to depotism and tyranny. Poor, frail human nature, God can do little for men who lose their sense of dependence upon him. 
as we mature in age, as we grow, the possibility of us losing our faith becomes increasingly possible. I've seen many people who started well with God when they were young, as they mature in their age, they begin to ask questions and doubt begins to take root in their minds. And they give up on God. Such was also the situation in Bible as well. As David, the father of Solomon, he saw old age coming to him. As he saw that, you know, he's been king, he's been in power, he has conquered over nations. But there was one thing that he could never conquer, and that was time. Kept moving. There was a time when he was young boy, then there was time when he was in full vigor and strength. He was having this power that he could conquer the world. But then there was the time that he couldn't stop, and he was growing old, weak. And as he saw that coming towards him, he says in Psalms 71, verse 9. As you look at the end, this is the passage. Cast me not off in the time of old age. Forsake me not when my strength faileth. That's what David said. But let me just look at these few words as they are written in testimonies for the church. David was deeply moved. He was distressed as he looked forward to the time when he should be aged. He feared that God would leave him and that he would be as unhappy as other aged persons whose course he had noticed and would be left to the reproach of the enemies of the Lord. With his burden upon him, he earnestly prays, Lord, please do not cast me aside. As my strength weakens, as I become old, please do not ignore me anymore. Today, as we, you know, some of you may have some people in your families. I have my mom, um, she, she is in Pakistan. Uh, my dad passed away in 2014, and my mom is not doing that well now uh, as well. Uh, she is really sick. I was just talking with her last week. And whenever I talk with her, you can hear the cries and pains and aches. As, uh, and and as, as a son, I try to encourage her that, you know, may God be your strength. May you remain faithful to him. And uh, then she would start talking that, uh, you know, when I die, please bury me right next to my husband. Bury me right next to your father. And then I would try to encourage her. I would tell her, Mom, don't get so stressed about that. Don't be saddened by this fact. Because the truth is, even the kings and the richest people on earth who have ever lived, they have gone that way too. They were born, they have died, and we will die as well. The time will come for us. But Mom... Now is the time to remain faithful and strong in the Lord. This is the time to trust in Him because He will come to take us home. Yes, you may sleep, Mom, but Jesus will come and raise you up. And then I will tell her, Mom, the time is coming for me too. I've got gray hair quite early in my age. My wife keeps telling me that you need to use one of the products that makes you look young. You need to color your hair. I have given up on that. Because I started using that, I got my hair gray quicker. Because some of those things, they really push it, fast track things, so that you can become dependent on them. So, <laughs> so I, I became dependent on that, and I finally gave up. So anyways... Please don't think that I'm discouraging you. You, you. you remain doing, if that's what something you love, keep doing. Don't, don't go after me. I've just decided to remain gray-haired man. Okay, so looking at, as the age, you know, as we face that, you know, there is a time when we are young, as we begin to grow old, 
there's another possibility that we begin to lose our focus and purpose and goal. As we look back in life and we have worked hard, we have gained the wealth, we have bought houses, we have bought cars and we have done all of that. And now comes the time. I remember I was visiting one, uh, one of our relatives in the hospital and uh, as he was lying on his sick bed, I entered the room and as I was there, I was talking with him, quite aged he was, and uh, as we talked, he, he started sharing with me that, you know what, I worked so hard in my life. I earned so much money and I've got good amount of money in my bank account, but these doctors are telling me that the sickness that I have is incurable. They can't cure it. He had some, something to do with his lungs. There was some sort of growth happening. And they just couldn't cure that. He said, all the money that I have now, I can't use that. It's gone. He was, he was quite saddened. And uh, as age hits us, sometimes we can lose our focus and purpose and goal. And this is one, of, one quote that really got my attention. The age standard bearers in the cause of God are far from being useless. That's what, you know, Ellen White, she says. The men who have held the beginning of their confidence steadfast unto the end are not to be accounted second or third in the work of God. They are not to be cast aside as having outlived their usefulness. God has an important part for them to act in His work. By learning of Christ, they have obtained a rich experience. When they have made false steps, they did not refuse to be corrected. When they wandered from the path that Christ trod, they allowed him to let, uh, lead them once more into it. Thus they have learned to help others. You know, I have talked with a good number of people, elderly people, and of course with the young people as well. And mostly sometimes our you know, elderly people will say, what can I do? I, I can't do anything. And as you look at this core, she challenges us as we grow in our age. She tells us that we are to be the witnesses and living examples and holding on to that purpose that God has planted in our hearts and going strong as we journey forward. She was writing to one of the administrators who was in the history of Seventh-day Adventist Church. His name is uh, G.I. Butler. He was also the General Conference President. And as Ellen White, she wrote to him, this is what she says. She tells him, Dear Brother G.I. Butler, he was quite old at that time, as she's writing him, I greatly desire that the old soldiers grown gray in the Master's service shall continue to bear their testimony right to the point. I have seen in our churches, there comes a time when our people, they grow old and they are in the rest home or they are houseborn. I must accept that, that they are on our church roles, but how much attention and time do we pay to them? How much time do we take to still stay connected with them? How much do we encourage them that they are still part of the church family? They're still part of God's kingdom and they can make a difference wherever they are. And Alan, while she's encouraging, she's telling to that uh, administrator, or he was the general conference president, she tells him that greatly desire that the old soldiers, grown gray in the master's service, shall continue to bear the testimony right to the point that those younger in the faith may understand that the messages which the Lord gave us in the past are very important at this stage of the earth's history. You know, our young people, they look at us. They look up to us. And as we grow or mature in our life, and if we give up on our faith, our young people, they get discouraged. What is there to look up to? What is there to look forward to? And we as elderly people and we are as, as mature people, She's encouraging us to be the example, to be the light that guides our younger generation. 
And she says, our past experience has not lost one jot of his force. I thank the Lord for every jot and tittle of the sacred word. I would not draw back from the hard parts of our experience. C.S. Lewis, uh, he says, you're never too old to set a new goal or dream a new dream. Yes, there are aches and pains. Yes, there, it, it's, it's, we are weak and fragile when we age or as we mature in life. You know, today I might be young, but the time will come when I'll mature and grow old. This is the wisdom I must grab on to. God, by the way, as, as we grow, as we journey through life, this is what God promises through His Word in Isaiah. Even to your old age, I am... He, and even to gray hairs, I will carry you. I have made and I will bear. Even I'll carry and I will deliver you. This is such a strong and beautiful promise that we can hold on to. Another promise that is mentioned in the book of Corinthians, Paul, Apostle Paul, who actually ran the race till the last breath of his life. He never gave up. And these are beautiful words from him. He says, therefore, we do not lose heart, even though our outward man is perishing. He knew that we can't stop aging. As we grow, as we journey through life, that is definitely going to come. And he says, therefore, we do not lose heart, even though our outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. Am I inwardly strengthened through God's promises? For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, is working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory, while we do not look at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen are temporary. Eternal. And that's what Paul wants us to hold on to. When Jesus was born, there was one lady. She, her name is Anna. She was called Prophetess. Anna, that's, that's, that's a beautiful name. She was a prophetess in the Bible. And uh, as Jesus was born, she, she was about 84 years old. And they brought Jesus and she, she was looking forward to seeing the Savior. And there, there are words that I want you to pay attention to here. And coming up at that very hour, she began to give thanks to God and to speak of him to all who were waiting for the redemption of Jerusalem. She was 84 year old. And as soon as she saw Jesus, what did she start doing? She started sharing with others about the redemption and the salvation she received in Jesus Christ. So friends, the truth is that whether we are young, whether we are in the middle age, midlife, whether we are on the other side, whichever, wherever you find yourself on the spectrum, here's the truth. Our existence is because of grace. Grace is what we need in the beginning. Grace is that we need in the mid. Grace is that we need at the end as well. Biblical characters failed in many ways, but there is one thing that they teach us as you look through the Bible and some of the characters as as you look at the life of David, there was a time when he was young, and as he's growing old, he's feeling way more scared and weak, and he goes back to God, and he prays to him that, please do not cast me by the side. Remember me. Support me. And these are the most beautiful promises that we can hold on to. If you are feeling lonely, if you're feeling depressed, there is no time in life when we cannot have goal. We cannot have purpose in our life. And that is what we see 
in the Gospel of Luke, Anna, she was 84 year old, and as soon as she saw Jesus, as soon as, uh, as, as soon as she's encountering with, she had this encounter with Jesus, she looks at his face, she goes out, and she starts speaking, uh, she starts speaking of him. She starts sharing with others about Jesus. If you are quite mature in age, don't think that you're done. She was 84 years old. She didn't think that she was done. She was waiting for years. She was waiting for years to see Jesus. And finally, when she saw him, she went out and she witnessed for him. I just want to read uh, this last passage for us. Hebrews chapter 11. One of the most beautiful passages that encourages us as we journey with the Lord. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen, for by it the elders obtained a good testimony. By faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that the things which are seen were not made of things which are visible. By faith Abel offered to God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, through which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, and through it, he being dead still speaks. By faith, Enoch was taken away so that he did not see death and was not found because God had taken him. For before he was taken, he had his, this testimony that he pleased God. But without faith, it is impossible to please him, for he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. By faith, Noah, being divinely warned of things not yet seen, moved with godly fear, prepared an ark for the saving of his household, by which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness, which is according to faith. Let me wrap this message by calling uh, Lovini, if you could please come up. And then we have a few certificates that we wanted to present to some of our experienced people who have been with Garden City Fellowship for a long time. They have seen this church right from the beginning. And uh, I would like to call uh, our head elder, Carl, to come to the front. And we want to actually just present these certificates to you to, to let you know that your presence is appreciated. Even if you are not at church and you are housebound, we think of you. We call you, we check on you, and we pray for you. And this certificate of acknowledgement and appreciation is just given to let you know that you are part of us. You are part of this movement of people who are not done yet, because Jesus is not here yet. Till the last breath that we have, God has placed that call upon each one of us to keep on testifying for Him. So I would like to call, uh, before Loini shares uh, something she has prepared, I want to call upon Bob, if you could come to the front, please. We will uh, present this certificate for you. And then we have Barry, if you could please come as well. We will have a special prayer as well for you. Yes. And we have Hillary, if you could please come to the front and stand here with, with others, please. We will offer special prayer for you guys. And Barry, please come. And uh, then we have Lovini. We'll present this to you as well. Thank you, Hilary. Thank you so much. And then we have uh, Carol. She is not here. She's on the other end. Uh, uh, Carol, if you could please come to the front as well. And then we have uh, Colin. Colin, can you come to the front as well? You are still young, Colin. That's okay. And then we have Elizabeth and Alex. If you could please come to the front as well. Oh, thank you. 
That's actually for Carol. Oh, okay. <laughs> and uh, then we have Elizabeth and Alex. If you could please come, we will. The reason we are calling you is we want to offer a special prayer for you as well. Uh, that's for for them. And then Heather, if you could make your way up as well. Here is Colin. All oh, right. Yours. <laughs> Do you have the pen? Thank you. That's okay. Yep. Right. We will offer a special prayer for these people. So we have Heather, this is for you, and then we have Elizabeth and Alex. Thank you. Please come up, Alex. You can stand next to your wife. This was my desire. Um, you know, as you know, every third Sabbath of the month, we have a very special Sabbath. I just wanted to make sure that we acknowledge some of our elderly people and let them know that they are not forgotten. They, they are very special, important part of this church. And, you know, look at these beautiful people. The way you, you can support this church, our young people cannot. I cannot. You can pray for our church. You can witness in a different zone, in a different place. Luvini, I'll give it over to you. You have a few words to share. And we'll give you microphone Please, go ahead, and this is your moment now. God is good. Amen. God is good. In the beginning, God created heaven and earth. I wonder where that is. Any one of us here on the stage know where that is from? In the beginning, God created heaven and earth. Where, is it? where did I get that from? Genesis. Genesis. <laughs> That's good. Your memory is still there. <laughs> there you are. Is he right? Yes. 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 Genesis. Genesis what? One verse one. Good one. So therefore, our memory is still there. That's very good. That's a good exercise. <laughs> now, I like the word beginning. In the beginning, there was a word. Mm. And the word was God. Mm. The word I'm quote from the old uh, King change. I can't remember anymore after that. The same was in the world. <laughs> and three, he created all things. And all things were created by him. Mm. Four, he is life. And life is in the light. Mm. Five, or which book of the Bible am I quoting? Any one of you on the stage? Mm. Anyone on the stage? Oh dear, we need our memory to exercise. <laughs> and this is one of the best exercise is to memorize the scripture. Amen. Find in the Bible what word you are interested in and then memorize it. I will tell you later. Now, what verse are we here? Four. Oh, I've done that. It's five. Memories. Mm. Uh, for he was the light, and light is life, and life is in the light of the word. Five. Mm -hmm. mm, five. Now my name is gone. Five, 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 five. Uh, help me, Lord. Oh, praise God. Uh, I have to look. Sorry. That's okay. Yeah. That's okay. And the light was. Uh, I can hold this one for you. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, I have to. I will tell you how long I've memorized this. And then you realize, okay, five, the light shining in the darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. Five, I'm six. There was a man sent from God. His name was John. He was sent as a witness, bear witness of the light. He was not the light, but was sent to bear witness of the light. 
that series eight. Nine, he was the light, the true light. That's Jesus, the true light. He came to show the world, oh, sorry, that, um, I'm shaking, I'm nervous. He came on to. Nine, that's no, nine. Mm -hmm. That was the true light that's light with every man that comes to the world. Mm -hmm. Ten, um, he was, he was in the world, mm -hmm. he was in the world, my, my, you know, mind still not right. That's he okay. was in the world, he made the world, mm -hmm. and he, uh, was. And the world was made by him. And the world was made by him. <clears throat> now, ten, uh, he was in the world, and the world knew him not. Mm. Eleven. Uh, he came to, uh, he, he, came, he, he made the world, he was in the world, and the world knew him not. Now, 11, uh, 11, 11. He came to his own, and his own uh, believe, received him not. Now, 12, everyone knows verse 12. But to them who believe on him, he gave him power to become the sons of God even to them that believe on his name. And 11, uh, who was born not of the, the blood, nor of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. Mm. 13, uh, 13, the other side. Mm -hmm. That's your memory, dear. Yeah. <laughs> Very well. Because I'm nervous, you know. Don't worry, you, I'm, see, I'm right shaking. here. Which, which were born not of the flesh, mm -hmm. nor the, not, not of the blood, nor the will of the flesh, nor the will of man, but of God. Amen. That's, uh, and that's 13, wasn't it? Yeah. So 14 yeah. is my last one. Mm -hmm. He was the word. He was the word. He dwelt among us. We beheld his glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father. Mm. Who is full of grace and true. Amen. Uh, that I memorized that September last year. I was thinking about how to exercise the brain. Mm. And this is, was one of the things that told, somebody told me to memorize. When I was at the LE, I was an LE, LE evangelist. evangelist. Yeah. And we memorize what we say to the people and say, I am Loini, I am from blah, blah, blah. And I said, oh, I would like to memorize the verse because the, the word lasts. Every other thing will pass away, but the word of God will not pass away. And so I decided to memorize the, from that time. Mm. And so uh, it sort of prompted me to memorize. So September last year, I started to memorize this scripture. So I memorized it. Uh, in English and in Samoa, this one. And so, uh, when I had the stroke, there was no one supposed to come and see me. Even mm. Pastor, you came. Yeah, I and came and they, 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 say, they no. just sent me away. Yeah, they said, no, they can't. <laughs> but I was memorizing this. I was thinking of it. Oh, the word is God, and the word is with God, and the word is God. Mm. And then there it says, oh, he is the life, and life is the light of men. And it was ministering to me and during that time. And mm. so thank you so much for sharing all this. And uh, as I, sh I want to share, that memorizing the scripture is very, very important. It's very good. Because as we say, we are never lonely, and we are never, uh, you know, like sick when you're sick. It's also the scripture says, and also our church exercise health and uh, things like that. Mm -hmm. And they also, I ask the question, why are people worship the sun? And there it was, right there in this scripture. Because in, from there I look further and also uh, Psalm 19, uh, the, the sun, the creation. There's no word, there's no language. They don't speak, and yet... He shined and talked to everyone from the beginning to the end. The sunset and the sunrise, everybody enjoyed it. And in Psalms um, 19, it says it's like a groom 
The son is like a groom in the coming out from his chamber, the first marriage, and also it's like a, a, a warrior running happily. And also the word says, when we uh, uh, serve, serve with a joyful heart. And that is also a very good thing. We can, uh, whatever God called to do, to do it joyfully, and he will bless us. I can share a lot. And, uh, Thank you. But it's of time and also, yeah. Yeah, everybody just went to God. And thank you so much for the praising. Thank you so much for the word. Thank you for, for so much for everyone, the children that are not here, and everyone who's coming uh, today for the worship team. I must say I am uh, riding a bike. I am riding a bicycle. This is also, you know, in Ephesians 3.20, it's what's in your mind. I didn't ask, and I thought, oh, I would like to ride, because I used to ride bike before. But then I thought, riding a bike is another ex good exercise. <laughs> and on the road, there were two bicycles. One was a small one, and one was my size. Because I lost my balance, I used the small one like a toddler just to start to walk. So I, you know, just not really riding. And then when I got my balance, I start riding the bike. It still wobbled, yeah. But I don't go on the right. <laughs> And then I said to my daughter, she's, I said, I'm ready now to go on the road. She said, you can't. You haven't got a helmet. So I went and bought a helmet second hand. So now I'm on the right. <laughs> so there you are. You're never too Thank you. old. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Louini. Thank you. Uh, doesn't she inspire everybody? Amen to that. <laughs> okay, we're going to pray quickly. Elder Carl, can you pray for our... Our people here, sure. because some of them, they may be wanting, wanting to, to go sit and sit. Down. Yeah. <laughs> and I'll just uh, reiterate that I'm up here not as an elder, but as an elder. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> let's pray. Uh -huh. uh, call him, oh, ask to come and be prayed. Yep. Okay. Yes. Awesome. Let's pray. Dear gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, um, we just want to thank you for um, these fine people's lives. Thank you, Lord, that you're watching over them. Thank you that you're blessing them. Thank you that you're still leading and guiding and and working in their lives, Lord. Lord, as we may even grow older in age, um, we are still children. And um, Lord, we just thank you that we can claim to be your children. And Lord, as we uh, acknowledge uh, these wonderful people in our church, we just pray that your Holy Spirit will continue to work in them, continue to build their faith and their hope in you, Lord, as um, we know we have eternity to look forward to. So Lord, we just um, are privileged having them as part of Garden City Fellowship, and we look forward to... Um, their continued ministry in whatever way it is that you um, want to work through them. And this is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Yes. Yes. Thank you. Please, please be seated. Because it's their day today, she wants to sing a song. So I will let her, le let her just quickly sing a song. And then we have a praise and worship team. They will come up. Jesus. And by the way, they have a special table to eat as well today. They have a big cake. And, uh, you know, bottles of juice as well. So they're going to have a really, really special day. Luini, go ahead. Jesus is the answer to our every need. Jesus is the answer. He's a friend indeed. Trust him, then you see. Jesus is the answer to our every need. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Louini.